problem in sleeping with strangers is they're strange. Send Foreman and Taub, they're better liars. You think I drugged her? Use a coaster. You always this thirsty? I just gave her some E to help enhance things. Have any of it left? And down the substance-linked sex rabbit hole we go. You see, if he was taking ecstasy, then the chances are that he needed to take other pills as well, unless the encounter consisted of a spaghetti slapping contest. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 4, Episode 10, It's a Wonderful Lie. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos. This will be Episode 91. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. <laughs> Okay, I got you. Oh my God. My hands, I can't move them. Can you think of anything more terrifying than being up at a height and having your partner let go of the rope? That's exactly why belay partners have the rope attached to them via a belt harness rather than having it somewhere that could slip through their fingers. Also, where was the crash mat? Who ran the health and safety for this climbing center? Jackass! A fall from that height, we're talking broken wrists, ankle fractures and concussion, but the daughter isn't our patient, the mum is. So what can cause sudden onset bilateral hand weakness? A stroke would be sudden, but just affect one side, not both. A mess would be more slow rather than sudden. A disc prolapse in her neck could cause both sides to be affected like this if it were pressing on the C8 T1 nerve roots, but then it would cause shooting pains as well, which it doesn't seem like she has. In the real world, if someone presented like this, then I would also be considering something called carpal tunnel syndrome. But what even is that? Well, an important nerve called the median nerve runs through the small area in the wrist and can get compressed there, causing weakness of the thumb and the two fingers next to it. You might also have reduced bulk of the spongy muscle ball at the base of your thumb, which is called the thenar eminence. It's more likely to happen in pregnancy, people who repetitively strain their hands, those with low thyroid hormone or diabetes as well. A surgical procedure can sort it out, but for this patient, we need blood tests, nerve conduction studies, and probably some counseling for dropping her daughter. None of the treatments have had any effect. You think it's gonna keep all four of us? My ears are burning. So who's sick? 35 year old single mom. Is there any history of drug use? No, she promised herself she would never hide anything from her own daughter. I didn't know she'd promised. Patient inherited the BRCA1 mutation from her mom. She had a prophylactic double mastectomy 10 years ago. Reconstructive surgery is designed to convince people that- She didn't get reconstructive surgery. MRI, what's left of her chest. I'm gonna go redo the patient history. What's her favorite way to have sex? You just think we gotta be lying to White us. lies? More of those. Those are lies we tell to make other people feel better. She used to like being on top, but now she likes to be on her stomach. And that is why House never takes his own histories, although there are more layers of meaning to this than meet the eye. The patient's mom died of breast cancer at the age of 31, and our patient never knew about it, coming as a shock. To make sure that never happened again, our patient then said she would never hide anything from her daughter, and House is seeing how far that oath stretches, and it seems it stretches all the way to the bedroom. What could her Kama Sutra menu selection tell us about her inactive hands? It obviously takes a bit more muscular endurance from the legs to be on top rather than on the stomach, so maybe it's not just her hand muscles that are affected. With a more widespread muscular condition, that could indicate a type of autoimmune condition called polymyositis, where the body starts attacking its own muscles. Or they are saying the patient had the genes for breast cancer called BRCA1, which can also cause ovarian cancer. Maybe the bedroom adjustment then is because she has a tumor in her ovary, which is triggering the muscle weakness. You see, paraneoplastic syndromes can trigger the polymyositis as well, which would make it fit this case so well, so that will be my first diagnostic guess. It is a bit strange for a young child to be talking about such an adult topic, so question for you smart people, what country of the world has the lowest age of consent, and what is it? Put your answer down below, and I'll give you it at the end of the video. That way she doesn't have to see them looking at her scars. It's child abuse. There's a reason that everybody lies. It works. Axilla's clean, surgical margins look clear, no lymphadenopathy, no masses, no nothing. It's not cancer. Yes. STDs aren't the only risk in risky sex. Problem in sleeping with strangers is they're strange. Send Foreman and Taub, the better liars. You think I drugged her? Use a coaster. You always this thirsty? I just gave her some E to help enhance things. 
have any of it left. And down the substance-linked sex rabbit hole we go. You see, if he was taking ecstasy, then the chances are that he needed to take other pills as well, unless the encounter consisted of a spaghetti slapping contest. That's because ecstasy causes erectile dysfunction in around 50% of men. They say women are more complicated in the bedroom, but men aren't so simple ourselves. You see, to get the blood where it should be when it's time to perform, the nerves that control the process are the rest and digest ones. So having a drug that's flooded you with excitement is likely to make your pant captain go from William the Conqueror to cold pasta faster than you can say, forget the red pill. To make things even more complicated, after we've gotten a standing ovation from the rest and digest system, the fight or flight system controls the climax, which ecstasy would be stimulating. This complex mix means that all the dangerous drugs get mixed at what they call chemsex parties, where usually the male homosexual community can buy a cocktail of GHB, B, cocaine, ecstasy, MDMA, poppers, and Viagra in an endless circle of counteracting undesirable side effects. These are a doctor's nightmare. You've got disinhibition, drugs that could quite literally explode your heart, and all mixed with a not so healthy dose of HIV and hepatitis. Some of these are so risky that we're now prescribing drugs called PrEP, which means pre-exposure prophylaxis. They're drugs that can kill the HIV virus that people take before engaging in high risk activities. They don't work 100% of the time, but can help drop down the risks as much as possible. How does that all relate to our patient? Well, ecstasy can be laced with all kinds of metals like mercury, lead, or even arsenic. If the doses she had were contaminated, it could lead to the paralysis, especially if she's a regular visitor to E-City. The theme of this episode is all about lies though, so there must be a big lie here that the patient isn't telling her daughter that holds the key to the diagnosis. Let's find out. I've had a sore throat for a few days now. St. Nicholas? Patron saint of children. I'll open wide. You have strep. Take a personal day. I can't. I'll write your pimp a note. Prostitutes wear religious symbols. I think they just like kneeling. Cutting is starting the patient on hemodialysis and 13's in the lab trying to figure out what the guy put in the drugs. I mean, the lights just went out. I wouldn't. can't see. Do something. I can't see. I can't see. Sort of onset visual disturbance. Go, go, get the CT head now. Urgently, she's having a stroke. Not just any stroke either, it's affecting both eyes all at once. We need to confirm with the scan, then get the clot busting drugs in stat to save her sight. What's interesting is when you put people on heparin to thin their blood for the hemodialysis machine, that should lead to the blood being thinner, not thicker, and stopping clots. That's why we don't just jump in Rambo style as if she has bleeds rather than clots, which 10% of strokes are, then that treatment will make sure she never sees again. Medicine isn't easy, but then nothing worthwhile is easy really, is it? If it isn't a stroke, then what else could it be? MS could be something like this, but it would be in one eye, not both usually. There is nothing usual about house though. The other thing is if she's this liberal with her habits, maybe the big secret is that she's been abroad and picked up a parasite that's infected her eyes. Maybe she went ahead and got river blindness or amoebic keratitis. That is quite a stretch though. These season four episodes really step it up a notch. Do an MRI. Check for MS and a fluorescein angiogram of her eyes to see if we missed a bleed somewhere. Oh, and whoever goes to their house, get me their computers. Choroidal flush looks good. The eyes reach the retinal capillary bed, no leakage. Means it's not a vascular problem. They look worried now, Mom. Have you tried leaving it blank? Tough to get into the head of someone who actually trusts people, huh? Find anything on the MRI? This is not a mess. You can't lie about flaccid paralysis. Maybe she's not lying. Her brain is. What if it's a conversion disorder? You need to trick her mind or even better. Conversion disorder has always fascinated me. The term was coined by Sigmund Freud and it's called conversion disorder because your mind is taking unresolved psychological trauma and manifesting that conflict in a physical way. It can cause weakness, paralysis, speech symptoms, pseudo seizures, or even smelling random odors like garlic or burning, which you can't explain. Treatment would be targeted psychotherapy to reveal the underlying trauma and try to bring it to the surface safely to resolve. Taking another step back in history though, conversion disorder is the descendant of a very controversial diagnosis known as hysteria. 
the father of medicine Hippocrates thought that the uterus dries up and starts wandering the body looking for moisture. The theory is that the rogue Sahara uterus would cause symptoms based on which organs it encountered. Examples could be fluid retention, anxiety, fainting, loss of appetite, sexual desire, or loss of sexual desire. The treatment of this condition until the early 20th century was the manual stimulation of the female genitalia until orgasm by physicians. Some historians have even suggested that the inconvenience of that is what gave birth to the vibrator. Thankfully, the diagnostic techniques improved throughout the 20th century, hysteria diagnoses died out and their previously attributed symptoms became part of other conditions like anxiety attacks, schizophrenia and conversion disorder. Madness. I have to lie because she trusts me. I know how to lie. I just won't do it to my mother. It's a very effective treatment. You should be feeling better in a matter of minutes. It's secret, Santa. He's not supposed to put his name in there five times. He wants presents. It's sad. It's pathetic. What's wrong? I think it's getting worse. I can't breathe. I need a nurse in here. The lymph nodes are cutting off her airway. We gotta intubate. Swollen lymph nodes means it wasn't psychological. 18 months ago, she sold her Stairmaster. Climbing stairs was getting more difficult. We'll need a bronchoalveolar lavage to confirm it. Have you ever considered channeling your powers to, I don't know, bring peace to the Mideast? As long as you're pristine, no infiltrates or alveolar hemorrhage. <coughs> What's wrong? If Santa is real, then House now has enough lumps of coal to start a Chinese power plant. If you're wondering what's going on with the secret Santa situation, then House thought his team were filled with too many undesirable qualities like confidence and unity. So he decided to try and plant more desirable traits like we had in the good old days, like hostility, insecurity, and terror, all born from a twisted secret Santa where everyone is allocated to give gifts to House. When looking at this patient though, we're seeing red and it's not Christmas spirit. What better Christmas gift can we get though than some new clues? We now have bleeding eyes after coughing and swollen lymph nodes to add to blindness and paralyzed hands on our list of diagnoses. One of the first ones that comes to mind with this constellation of symptoms now is viral hemorrhagic fever. You may have heard of a particularly famous type known as Ebola. There are other types though, like Lassa fever, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, or dengue fever. They are particularly nasty types of viruses that can kill up to 50% of people who are infected. It spreads through contact with body fluids like blood or semen and symptoms can start between two and 20 days after infection. It usually starts with tiredness, fever, and weakness, but it can cause neurological complications similar to what our patient has as well. If you remember back in 2015, when the Scottish nurse Pauline Caffecki got infected after coming back from Sierra Leone, there were reports that the virus was detected in her spinal fluid and caused a meningitis-like syndrome. For our patient, that could explain why her scans are normal, even though her body's nerves are working about as well as sunscreen in a sandstorm. Viral hemorrhagic fever will be my second diagnostic guess. How does that fit into the Stairmaster sale though? Because that indicates something that's been going on for much longer. Let's find out. Maggie tested negative for sarcoidosis. Have her platelets dropped? Plummeted. New labs show they're under 40. Go to the factory, do a bone marrow aspiration. I'm your secret Santa. Merry Christmas. Can strep cause this? No rash on my labia. Do you need to take a look? Darker sheet of lipstick? I'm not wearing any. House cleverly deduced his patient was part of the oldest profession in the world earlier by the necklace she wore. I'm not competing with a human. House is the original AI. It's a miracle I've beaten him at any point, but I may just be about to do it again. You see, the darker shade of lipstick, the extra rash and resistance to initial antibiotics could mean the patient has a particularly nasty complication of strep known as scarlet fever. It usually affects young children and can cause a rash spreading across the body that's itchy and it looks like sunburn. The throat looks riddled with pus and these patients can have a tongue that looks like a strawberry, which can affect the lips as well. It usually needs a longer course of antibiotics around 10 days, but the fundamental bacteria that causes it is similar to the one that causes tonsillitis called group A strep. Usually people can stay outside of the hospital while on antibiotic treatment unless they're struggling to eat, drink, or maintain their blood pressure, and then they need to be in hospital. 
Question for you smart people, what percentage of GP appointments are for sore throat? Answers down below and I'll give you it at the end of the video. Can you do a donkey show? It's a donkey or a mule. You can never remember. Contagious ecthyma. Antibiotic cream for you and a love glove for Francis. If you don't know what a donkey show is, then keep in mind her profession and the fact she has an animal virus now living in her throat and you can probably fill in the gaps. Contagious ecthyma is caused by a highly contagious virus known as off, which lives in sheep and goats. It's usually transmitted to farmers through secretions, contaminated objects, feeding equipment or contact with a different kind of bedding. Thankfully, the immune system usually clears on its own and managing the pain is a good idea, but if any treatment is used, then it will be antiviral, not antibacterial cream. You can stop it coming back by focusing on packing a mule rather than what the mule is packing. Pretty terrible. So they're really never live? Doesn't seem like it. Stop, stop. What's that smell? The bone is smoking. The bones are harder than the drill? Because our entire skeleton is turning to stone. Well, it's got to be from a carbonic anhydrase type 2 deficiency. If the blood test is positive, you'll need a bone marrow transplant. Jane is your best bet. Find someone else. Whoa, 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 I just cracked the lie. Don't quote me on that though. You see, our bone leaves a fine balance of osteoblasts which lay down new bone and osteoclasts that are little Pac-Man cells that break it down or remodel the bone. She has a condition that stops the osteoclasts or the Pac-Man cells and causes the bone to harden. Here, they said her bone would be harder than a drill, but that isn't quite true as even though it's hard, it's actually weaker because the old bone doesn't get broken down. Stopping a drill with your hip Definitely makes for interesting television though. Now the team is saying she's got one condition called carbonic anhydrase type 2 deficiency, which could be treated with a bone marrow transplant from her daughter, but the patient is refusing testing for her daughter. Why? Because her daughter isn't her biological daughter. She's told her that she never lies, being overly truthful about things like drug use and sex positions to sell the principle when she's hiding something bigger. Her daughter is adopted. How does that relate to the rest of the symptoms? Well, if we add infertility to the mix with the bone hardening, hand weakness, blindness, bleeding, and swollen lymph nodes, we've come across it in a different episode before, Erdheim Chester disease. It's a rare multi-system disorder which causes excessive production of histiocytes and slow deterioration, which could explain all her symptoms. That has to be my final diagnostic guess, so we are locked in. If I get that, I swear, my house reactions journey will be complete. I'll still react to more, of course. Maggie didn't let us test her. There's no CA2 deficiency. Best we can do is make her comfortable. Who's gonna tell the patient she's dying? Nobody leaves here until we find out what killed her. I want you to test my marrow. A mother who's going to die doesn't refuse a donor test because it might hurt. I never wanted kids. I love them, but with my genes, I knew this woman, a drug addict but she also didn't want her daughter to ever know who her real mother was. It'd be cruel to tell her. Give the patient Risperidone. I am going to perform a Christmas miracle. When a fetus forms, it's just a mass of cells. Breast tissue covers extensive portions of the body. But sometimes, extra breast tissue is left behind in places where it doesn't belong. You're telling me I could have breast cancer somewhere not in my breast? Not milk. Cut out your mom's tumor and start her on chemo. breast cancer behind her knee. I milked my brain for diagnoses, but clearly my formula has curdled. I didn't get the diagnosis, but did crack the patient's lie, and I will take that. Very interesting condition here as well, ectopic breast tissue. It's been described in the armpits, belly, and even the groin. The thing about the milk production though, is it can only happen usually if there's an associated nipple or an unusually curious doctor with a needle. There was even one insane case described in the late 90s when an 18 year old African American woman who had breast tissue in her armpit only noticed it after she got pregnant. She even used that milk from her armpit to feed her baby. Madness. Also, it seems like House's clinic patient was in a different kind of donkey show to what we thought. Very spicy episode. I'd say 8 out of 10 entertainment, 8.5 out of 10 accuracy, 8.5 out of 10 diagnosis. The country with the youngest age of consent is Nigeria, which is just 11 years old, and 10% of GP consultations are for sore throat. This episode only makes full sense when you watch the previous one where it's time for the games to end.